How will people's choice top 100 games of all time? How will people's choice top 100 games of all time? <laughs> all right, welcome to the People's Choice Top 100 games of all time, but not actually top 100, but top 10 games. All right. Now, what's interesting is that on the People's Choice Top 100, you have one game that's the same as in my top 10. Great. Fantastic because diversity is good. You also, there's other places that games are ranked on the internet, and one place to ch check rankings of games is BoardGameGeek.com. And you'll notice that the top 10 games on our list here, which was done from a thousand people, which isn't, you know, all of board gaming, but it's different than Board Game Geeks. There's a few games that are the same, but I think one of the differences is, is that on ours, we don't really have any detractors. I just ask you to list your favorite, so there's no negative things bringing stuff down and to be frank a lot of people who watch this show or listen to the audio show of the dice tower probably tend to put euro games not as high on the list or, or they like thematic games or wait is that even true you know what why am i making all this analysis i'll let you make the analysis right now let's get to the top 100 or the top number 10 i'll stop talking number 10 R and R. I have to say I'm surprised at number 10, Arkham Horror. Wow. Not that I don't think it's a great game. I enjoy it myself. It's just that I didn't expect so many people to like it. I thought it was kind of a niche game, and I still think it's a niche game, and probably there's a lot of niche people who watch my show. But Arkham Horror, while there's people who sit there and go, too many expansions, too much, too fiddly. Yes, but there's theme, and it's exciting and interesting, and everywhere I go, I see people who love it. They play it with everything. Something I will probably never do. Because it looks like it'd just be overwhelming. But there's so many bits and pieces to it. It came out with an expansion for the expansions. But, you know, even the base game was just fascinatingly interesting. And it had the app, app, ability to creep me out with its text and the things and create this very extraordinary, interesting story. And all the time when I meet people and I go to conventions, Invariably, I'll see a game of Arkham Horror being played. And we're probably talking about the updated version of it as opposed to the original one. But Fantasy Flight's production values, of course, are stellar. But just a very good game that a lot of people like, Arkham Horror. Number nine, race for the I've met people who say that they have played over a thousand games to race for the galaxy. Holy cow. A thousand games. I don't play a thousand games on nothing. Okay, maybe someday I will, but I like playing lots of different games, but I cannot believe how much people like this game. And I like it, but there are people who have studied this. They know the best opening hands. And it's, it seems to be, this is a, a space card game, which you know, you're playing and you're conquering planets and putting things out in front of you, which really has all these different planets and all different, you know, technologies you can buy and so many different ways to interact. And yet, as far as I can tell, I have never heard anybody complain about any part of it being broken. It is extremely well balanced. It's a card game. We're lucky to draw determine some of what goes on, but how you play the hand you're dealt is very important. And I think most people I've met who enjoy it like it with two or three players only. Uh, might go farther than that, and it's a game that I enjoy quite a bit, but obviously not as much as y'all. Race for the Galaxy, but I have to give thumbs up for that awesome space theme. Number A, Ticket the Ride. Ticket to Ride is the one game that's on your list and on mine in the top 10. And you know, I've noticed that today, Ticket to Ride has hit that bump that every popular game gets. I've noticed when I, uh, one of these popular games comes out, Settlers of Catan, Carcassonne, Ticket to Ride, there's always people going, wow, this is great, 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 fun, 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 fun. Then after a few, three or four or five years, people say, well, you know, I, I never really understood the popularity of Ticket to Ride because it's just not as good as people say it is. Yes, it is. 
And while you may not like tickets to ride, and it's possible, everyone has different opinions, I'll tell you, I have had no greater success with any game than I've had with Ticket to Ride. Everywhere I go, people enjoy it, and I, I, you know, I, I wish I got a commission on the number of copies that I've sold just from playing with people. So many times I've played Ticket to Ride with a couple, and they said, this is a great game. We're going to pick up a copy of this. And then they get it. I think my whole family has copies of Ticket to Ride. If I'm going to buy a, a game for somebody, and, and I know they like games, they might not love them like I do, Ticket to Ride is a good choice. There's so many different variations and expansions, except for <clears throat> the dice expansion. But, you know, there's a lot of things that are just neat about Ticket to Ride. And so I'm glad that it made the top 100. But at the same time, not even remotely surprised. Number seven, Puerto Rico. For the longest time, Puerto Rico was number one on so many people's lists of games. And for a long time, I said, you know, Puerto Rico came out in 2008, 2009. It would not be as revered as it was when it did come out in 2001. But the simple fact of the matter is, I think probably it would. Because there are a lot of these games that come out. There's probably 40 or 50 of this style game that comes out each year. And none of them has come close to matching Puerto Rico for just how amazingly smooth it flows. And how there's so many different options. And I like the expansions for the game. Not everyone's as big of a fan. Excuse me. We'll edit that out. Or not. Uh, but not everyone's as big of a fan of the expansions as I am. Some people, you know, just like the pure aspect of the game. Some people complain about the seating order, and that certainly is something that, that could be problematic in the game, but the game just runs well. It has nice pieces, it's just, it's easy, there's so many different options. Watching what everyone else does, it's probably the height of interactive gaming without really being that interactive. But you can certainly make moves that affect the other players. And while I'm afraid to play Puerto Rico with people who are really good at it for fear that I'll play poorly and mess the game experience up for everybody, but at the same time, you got to give props to a great game, Puerto Rico. Number six, Pandemic. There are a lot of cooperative games these days. The cooperative game that kind of broke into the genre was Lord of the Rings. The cooperative game that kind of exploded the genre was Shadows Over Camelot. But the cooperative game that got people to play it who almost never play games was definitely Pandemic. Now there's a lot of great cooperative games out there and there are some that I like better but I cannot deny as seeing how high Pandemic is on your list because I just again just like Ticket to Ride when I said earlier this is a game that I can bring out anywhere. The theme is one that everybody can appreciate. We all want to conquer world disease. And it makes sense. You're working to, together to do something that's good. So someone who might go dragons or who might go merchants will be interested with a pandemic outbreak across the world and trying to stop it. It's good. It's cooperative. It works together. And with the expansion adds so many different interesting options. It's hard, especially on those harder levels. I, I, I just cannot fathom beating it in some of the levels because it's so difficult, but it gives such a sense of accomplishment and people will play it and they'll say, let's try it again, let's try it again. That's the mark of a good game and I, and, you know, I didn't expect it to be as high as it is on your list, but again, not completely surprised to see it there just because of the sheer popularity of it. Pandemic. Come back next week for, okay, not next week because the next video is coming up right after this one. But the next video, we're going to talk about numbers one through five. What are your five favorite games? At this point, I think you can guess all of them. One of them is newish. Another one is not quite new at all. But, okay, I'm kind of spoiling it. Let's, get, well, let's, let's wait until next time. While you're bored, though, waiting for the three minutes so the other videos upload it, you can check out my top 100 of all time and Melody's number 10 through 6 of all time, too. Well... Until then, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.